Hey, it's me and welcome to my channel, The Way What Is Truth. As usual, remember to like and subscribe and comment down below. Now, this video is about something that has irked me for the past 10 years or so, right? I was just reading this book written by a very clever chap called Ian Mortimer, and it's called The Time Traveller's Guide to Medieval England, right? It's been described as being an amazing book by Alison Weir, the most enjoyable history book I've read all year, the independent books of the year, the independent newspaper wrote that. Okay, so this is a really good book and I actually like it. Okay, I really do. I like it a lot. But now, now, now this must be true of all, well, not all history books. It depends whether or not they mention dragons or anything like that. But they, these people, well, what amazes me about historians is that they are so clever, they are so well educated, they're so knowledgeable about whatever expertise they have whether it's in uh, archaeology or or, or, or or whatever their um, particular historical expertise is okay and I've got a lot of respect for these people because they write a book they put it together and they publish it it's not easy to do it's not something that everyone can do okay um, I'm not taking anything away from this Ian Mortimer or countless other people that have written history books who uh, laugh at the idea of dragons and so on and so forth. But let me just read something. In 1841, a guy called Richard Owen coins the word dinosaur. The word dinosaur replaced the word dragon in 1841. Now, I assume that most people who write history books such as this believe in the theory of evolution. They believe that the dinosaurs died about 65 million years ago, which I don't believe for a second. Now, I'm no creationist. I don't believe the Earth is only six or 10,000 years old. I don't believe the Earth is flat. But I'm someone who rather sees both the evolutionists who believe the dinosaurs died about 65 million years ago, which is absolutely insane and ridiculous, and creationists as both being wrong. They're both wrong. It's as simple as that. Okay. Uh, I've done two videos myself. I've done a video, I think it was called Why Both Evolutionists and Creationists Are Wrong. I also did a much older video about the dinosaurs as well. Uh, plus, if you look at my playlist, you'll see many, many videos which prove that man and dinosaurs did in fact live side by side. That does not mean to say that man and dinosaurs live together, though. No, no, sorry. But that doesn't mean to say that, that the Earth is only a few thousand years old or flat or anything like that. But it does mean that the dinosaurs didn't die out 65 million years ago. Um, and uh, also, if you go to my community section, there's some interesting videos there as well, if you care to have a look. But, um, but yeah, it, it's really, really remarkable. Anyway, I'm going to read the rest of this article on my mobile phone uh, in a bit after I read this small part of this chapter. Now, it's from... Let's see what the name of this chapter is. The Knowledge of the Wider World. That's what this particular chapter is called in this book. And I'm just going to read it from there to there. Okay, so it won't be too long. Right. Even knowledge of our own side of the earth can be vague. Some of the fabulous races from the southern continent are confused with the inhabitants of far off places like India and Ethiopia. This is describing the general medieval knowledge in the 14th century of places outside of Christendom, by the way. Other domestic races are invented, such as the Ethiopian troglodyte, swift-footed but dumb cave dwellers. Okay, that's just like a stereotype. Uh, and the wife-givers, men who encourage everyone who passes their way to sleep with their wives and daughters in the hope of securing presents. There were probably people like that in some parts of the world. Some races in Asia are supposed to eat their parents, fattening them up in their twilight years before serving them up as a ritual feast. That sounds a lot like cannibalism to me, and it did happen in many parts of the world. The widely believed authority, John Mandeville, states that on the East Asian island of Sandin, if a man is sick and the prognostication is not good, the remedy for his malady is for his family to suffocate him and boil and roast his body and then feed him in a festive dinner to all his friends and relatives. The problem is that not all such a knowledge is wholly wrong. Of course it isn't. <laughs> in East Asia, there probably are cannibalistic communities. Also true. There are black people in Ethiopia, although they are not black from having been roasted by the sun, as the contemporary encyclopedias 
state. You see, there's nothing wrong with what he's saying there. Obviously, black people are not black because of how hot it is in a certain part of the world. Okay, that's what many people believed in the 14th century. And then it goes on to say this. Geographical experts will tell you that there is a large island off the coast of India, which we know as Sri Lanka. Very good, you might think, until the same informant adds that Sri Lanka has two winters and two summers every year. Okay, so, yeah, it definitely doesn't have two winters and two summers every year. Perhaps some seasons, some years, it may have seemed like that, or perhaps it went through a bad period where... Actually, no, that does not make sense. Perhaps they, had, perhaps they had a few years where they had long winters and long summers, intense heat for long periods of time and long cold for long periods of time. But yeah, yeah, I understand. But this is the point I'm trying to make here, and that dragons and elephants are common there. Now, let me ask you something, dear reader. This Ian Mortimer says and mocks the idea that dragons and elephants are common there. In Sri Lanka, okay, yes, elephants are popular there. Why would they mention a mythical non-existent creature, aka a dragon, along with an elephant? It doesn't make sense. It reminds me of the Chinese zodiac calendar where it shows all different domestic uh, animals like rabbits and so on and so forth, and then it shows the dragon. So are we supposed to believe that there are 12 animals in the Chinese zodiac calendar and all of them are real except for the dragon why why create why put in a fictional uh make-believe creature called a dragon along with all the other animals which in the chinese zodiac calendar like the snake and the rabbit and so on and so and so on and so forth are real but the dragon isn't could it be that the word dragon is an old word for dinosaur and that the dinosaur was indeed a real creature and that the evolutionists are wrong that's just one example i could give you okay um Anyway, let me read that again. Very good, you might think, until the same informant adds that Sri Lanka has two winters and two summers every year. Again, that can have a very logical explanation. It could have had, like, four to five months of intense heat and four to five months of intense cold. It's not, it's, it's not impossible. Okay. And that dragons and elephants are common there. Yeah? Why would we mention a fictional creature, like a dragon, and elephants are common there? Right? Why have they mentioned a real creature along with a so-called mythological creature, which in fact, in my mind, is simply a dinosaur? Okay, this world is inundated with dragon encounters, dragon myths and legends. Okay, St. George and the dragon. That was a Nothosaurus, that was a Nothosaurus dinosaur, by the way, what St. George killed. If you don't believe me, you can look it up yourself. If there is a medieval depiction of St. George killing a Nothosaurus dinosaur. And you can see the depiction of that dinosaur as clear as day, and it looks identical to what modern dinosaur experts identify as a Nothosaurus. I think it's N-O-T-H-O-S-A-U-R-U-S, or something like that, Nothosaurus, okay? Nothosaurus dinosaur. And it looks identical to the medieval depiction of the dragon that St. George killed in the medieval period. What further proof do you need? You can check it out yourself. It's on Google Images. You can get it on Yahoo Images as well. It's everywhere. Okay. That, that's two examples. The Chinese Zodiac calendar that I've just told you about and the medieval depiction in Spain of St. George killing the dragon, which, it look, which just so happens to look identical to a Nothosaurus. Everything from its head to its feet to its tail. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So... I'm just going to read this out one more time. Very good, you might think, until the same informant adds that Sri Lanka has two winters and two summers every year. Again, that could be freakish weather. And that dragons and elephants are common there. Elephants, yes, he's, he, he's put, but dragons? Question mark? Oh, the horror. Because, of course, this guy, this author, believes dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago. He doesn't realise that the word dragon was used to, to describe dinosaurs. The word dragon means terrible lizard, okay? Nor is this all. On the way home from Sri Lanka, you will come across unicorns. Who's to say there weren't creatures with horns sticking out of their head? It, did, it, it wouldn't necessarily be a horse who had a horn sticking out of its head, but there are other creatures that do. Possibly an extinct creature that we know nothing about or we know very little about, perhaps. And phoenixes. 
and any number of fabulous creatures. Now, a phoenix, about a, about, about a mythological bird called phoenix, I've done no research into this, but just from the top of my head, I would say that a phoenix could be a rare, exotic type of extinct bird. It could, it's probably a bird that no longer exists anymore, so I wouldn't really rule that out either. There could have been myths and fantasy-based stories added on to this exotic bird that is now extinct, or perhaps it's not extinct. Okay, who knows? But, uh, yeah. And anyway, it goes on to say, Nor is this all. On the way home from Sri Lanka, you will come across unicorns and phoenixes and any number of fabulous creatures. Perhaps the unicorn is a vague traveller's tale of the Indian rhinoceros. Maybe. Or maybe it's a different creature altogether that you know nothing about, Mr. Ian Mortimer. <laughs> Perhaps the dragon is a vague memory of a man-eating saltwater crocodile. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe all the dragon myths and encounters that are that are uh, written about worldwide from all, con all, from all four continents of the earth, from all four quarters of the earth, perhaps they're all crocodile encounters and nothing to do with dinosaurs. <laughs> Note the sarcasm in my voice there. Perhaps the dragon is a vague memory of a man-eating saltwater crocodile. It is impossible to tell. 14th century Englishmen do know what elephants and crocodiles look like. Exeter Cathedral has a fine elephant carving on one of its misseroids, and Henry III even kept an elephant at the Tower of London in the 13th century. It lived for three years. As for crocodiles, Bartholomew the Englishman has written a description of one. His bite is venomous, his teeth are horrible and shaped like a comb. If a crocodile finds a man by the edge of the water, he kills him, if he can, then weeps over him and finally swallows him. But it is fair to say that Englishmen know little for certain of the wider world. The only thing you can be sure of is that their understanding of what lies beyond Christendom is part fact and part fiction. That's mostly true, okay? I'm not saying that everything that Ian Mortar is writing is wrong. I'm just saying that he's biased. This is what irks me about just about, well, virtually, I'll say the vast majority of historians and archaeologists are so biased. It's unbelievable. Anyway, yeah, and then it goes on to say, and it might as well be all fiction considering that no one can tell one part from the other. Okay. <laughs> it makes me laugh. Do you know what makes me laugh? If the theory of evolution was really true and dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago, okay, then we would be inundated with transitional form fossils which show one kind of creature evolving into another kind over many millions of years. There would be more transitional form fossils than there would be fully complete ones. Does that make sense to, to whoever's watching this video? And I'm not, I'm not the only one who's saying it. It's not just because I'm a Christian. There are evolutionists. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of evolutionists that have said exactly the same thing. Why aren't, we in, why aren't we inundated with transitional form fossils that show one kind of creature evolving into another kind? There should be no missing links whatsoever. Again, like I said earlier on in my video, that doesn't mean to say the Earth is only a few thousand years old. In fact, it's written in the Bible. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the Earth? God said that. Where were you? when I laid the foundations of this earth, as if so you know nothing. You weren't there. Nowhere is it written in the Bible that the earth is flat or only six or 10,000 years old. But as for the history of this earth and this solar system and what's been going on on it, that's a different matter entirely. That's, that's open to interpretation. That's open to worldview. But, um, but yeah. Anyway, below it, it says discerning minds, question mark. The lack of distinction between fact and fiction with regard to distant countries is understandable, but it should alert you to a wider failure to distinguish between the real and the fabulous. Again, this is the author's bias showing tremendously here, especially in regards to that report of dragons and elephants being found in Sri Lanka. My argument is that all the dragon, well, almost all dragon myths and stories from all four quarters of the earth, from, from China, there are numerous Chinese dragon legends. There are dragon legends in the UK. There are dragon legends throughout Europe. It goes on and on and on. Okay, and these are dinosaur encounters, right? And uh, again, I implore anyone who's watching this video, I ask anyone who's watching this video to go to my playlist. You'll find plenty of evidence that man and dinosaurs did live side by side, I can assure you. 
and on my community wall and I've done a couple of videos pertaining to this matter and topic as well if you want to check it out. But yeah, I just thought I'd call this author's author out, Ian Mortimer. There must be... I should imagine that whenever dragons are, are mentioned or written about in history books, I think virtually all of them will say that the dragons are just myths and fairy tale and, and, and just made up stories, which doesn't make any sense because of the sheer number of dragon stories and legends all around the world. Think about it. Why people so stupid is to make up the same stories from all four quarters of the earth. And then you've got to think, how do those stories travel from one part of the world to the other part of the world? You know, but would they all copy off each other's stories? Are people that stupid and that thick? It, it, it very much reminds me of how modern day historians and authors and archaeologists and so on and so forth uh, and the people that write these books uh, say that all of the Greek gods, all the Roman gods were just made up and super, made up out of superstition because people were scientifically illiterate, people didn't understand the world as well as we do today. Uh, they, they say things like, oh, um, people made those things up in a bid to better understand the world around them, not because they were real or they had encounters with supernatural beings or anything. You know, but uh, in my opinion, in fact, it's not opinion, it's fact. <laughs> Because people will not build huge temples, huge statues such as, the, such as the Statue of Zeus, which is one of the wonders of the world, by the way. You know, it was absolutely massive, that statue. But do you think they would put all that money and all that time and all that effort into making such a huge statue over a being, over this god, Zeus, who never existed? And all these temples, many of which are still erect today, such as uh, the Temple of Athena, devoted to Zeus's daughter that is in the province of Salerno and within the province of Salerno is, is my Italian hometown called Castel Ruggiero in Italy. That's just one of the temples that, that is in the province of Salerno that is still around today and it's a temple devoted to Athena. Okay, so that's just one example I could give you. Anyway, I don't want to go too far off topic but that's just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from. This is my reasoning. Okay, that doesn't mean say that all dragon myths and legends are real. I'm sure some of them have been fabricated. But, uh, but anyone will tell you who knows anything about history and archaeology, most myths and legends have their basis in truth and fact. It's up to us how to interpret it at the end of the day. Most of these modern day historians and archaeologists, such as this Ian Mortimer, have got an evolutionary bent. In other words, they're biased for the theory of evolution. They believe in the Big Bang the first self-replicating molecule, which, by the way, is mathematically and scientifically impossible to have come about from a dead chemical soup. But they believe it. These people believe it because you best believe that most of these historians, most of the people that write these books, they're not Christian. They're not seeing it. They haven't got as broad a perspective on the world or anything as what you may think. Anyway, I don't want to make this video too long. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, yeah, so basically, whenever you come across the word dragon in a history book, don't take them seriously. Don't, don't, don't believe them when they say, oh, it's just a myth, it's just a legend, it's just fantasy, because they don't know what they're talking about. And it's something that has irked me for a very, very, very long time. Okay? <laughs> so uh, I, ho I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye, and take care.